Cool. Thanks for coming. Talking about splicing today. Hopefully, uh, who here has heard of splicing? Who here knows like what it is? Okay, cool. Who are like, okay, all hand, hand halfway hand waves? Great. Well, hopefully we're gonna, we're gonna get through it. Um, so I'm Dusty. It's me. Well, me when I was younger, but I like the photos, so I still use it. Uh, I, made, I made splicing. I created the code for the first implementation of splicing and like brought it to reality. Um, I've been working on it for, uh, God, it's been a while now. Like, I started in 2021 and uh, did the first splice on chain March 20, in March of uh, last year. And, uh, you know, it wasn't like, the code wasn't like ready. It was just like, I want to be the first person on chain to, like, you know, claim that. Kind of like, you know, the first person to be a lightning channel on chain, you know, so I was like, I'm going to take this credit because I'm the first one working on it. Uh, but I didn't actually get the code done until about October. Um, and the work still continues. So, like, what I'm working on is funded by uh, grants and donations, um, which are awesome, that, which have been very awesome. And I got to thank Cody. Cody is one of the guys, one of the guys running the thing because he got me my latest grants, and uh, he's my hero. Woo. So that's pretty much me. Okay. Oh, and I have a new website that I want to promote. It's lightningsplice.com for all of your latest splicey information. It's got like explanations of things, like updates, history, collection of uh, videos. And mics that don't work. Test, test. Test, test. Hello? Yeah. Okay, cool. It's working. Cool. So, new website. Check it out. You know, like, it's just it's just an informational site about splicing. I get this question a lot. People are like, where do I go learn about splicing? I'm like, I don't know. Go to a talk or something? I'm like, I don't want to read it. Okay. I made it. It exists. Go read it. Tell me your thoughts. Okay. What is splicing? So half of you have heard of it, half of you don't know what it is, half of you do kind of waving their hand that they sort of know what it is, which is, I think is smart not to be overconfident. Like in many things in Bitcoin, it's like the deeper you go in, the more complex it actually is. And this is, this is no exception to that. But its core, what it is, is the ability to dynamically change the size of lighting channels. Um, and so, so what that means is uh, channels have a certain size, so in, in Lightning, when you when you make a, make a channel, you start it off with a certain size and it's locked into that size forever, at least it was before splicing. The splicing allows us to change the size. Now, why do we care about the size? You might ask that. What is this thing I just learned about? Why do I care about it? Basically, it's the amount of payments that can go through it. So in this example, I have a rather large piece of payment trying to go through, and it can't get through unless the channel is big enough for it to go through. So the size of the channel is directly is correlated to how much can go through uh, a given channel. So splicing gives us the ability to uh, increase these channels in size, make them bigger. We can also decrease them. Generally, just make it more dynamic. Uh, one of the other cool benefits of splicing is we can do um, uh, we can do payments on the base layer, the legacy Bitcoin payments, directly from Lightning balances. And this is this is probably one of like, the underrated elements of splicing is that like right now everybody tends to keep their like you know. Legacy Bitcoin wallet and their Lightning wallet are two separate things that so can pay on both places. With, with this, you could pay from Lightning to anywhere. So, like in theory, all of your hot money could just be on a, on a Lightning wallet and then pay to anywhere in Bitcoin, kind of thing. I think it, I think it's a pretty big deal. Oh, fancy animations! There's the Bitcoin going on chain. I'm trying to avoid using the word on chain because it confuses views, even though it's like it's such a great word. Uh, okay, so uh, the other splicing thing you can do is is that you have multiple channels. You can move funds from one channel to another. So this is useful if you have like, um, the big lightning uh, companies will have lots of these channels, like a hundred, maybe hundreds, um, could be thousands theoretically. And what they're constantly doing is they're trying to get the funds in the right spot, into the right channels. You can think of these channels kind of like uh, bit accounts, right? And they're going to have accounts with balances in them, and they're trying to put those balances in the right spot. So, if you go to like you know Sally's sandwich shop to go buy a sandwich, and you try to write a payment to them, what your wallet is doing is looking for a Lightning routing node with an account balance with Sally that, that can make that payment for you. So, all these Lightning routing nodes are competing to have account balances in the right spot all the time. And it's a guessing game. They really don't know where to put it. They don't know if you're going to go to Sally's sandwich shop or Starbucks or whatever. So they're kind of just, you know, they're kind of just spreading on all the places, hoping that they get what you were looking for. And 
what they end up doing is over time, they can see that some channels are getting more activity, like Sally's Sandwich Shop is like popping, and people are tired of Starbucks, because I don't know, I, you know, <laughs> some reason. Um, they can notice the trends over time and start moving their funds away from the channels leading to Starbucks and then move them towards Sally. And this is the thing they're trying to do because it's a, it's a business. They want to get their funds in the right spot. Um, and the way you do this without splicing is just very, it's, it's much more complicated and uh, generally more expensive than using, than using this direct thing where you can move it between accounts. Um, the other big benefit of splicing is just block, box space efficiency. Uh, there's this old phrase, time is money, but I think we should bring in this new phrase, that block space is money. And the less of the block space you use, the more savings you're going to have. And for, if you're a lightning routing node, it's a very cutthroat business. Like, your margins are like paper thin, but if you can get those margins and duplicate them, you can make tons of money, right? So like, everyone's competing to get to the sl slowest possible layer and then repeat that a million times. And even if you're making 0 .01 pennies times a million per day, that starts adding up kind of thing. So lightning, I think it's become increasingly important for lightning routing nodes to be as blockchain efficient as possible. Use as little of the block space as they possibly can. And splicing for its category of stuff is, is the most block space efficient way to, to do all the things that I tried to do. Okay, and lastly, I know this is a lot of things, big list of amazing splicing things. This is the last one. Uh, it has fancy coin join stuff. <laughs> Several gloss over a little bit today, but this is actually really cool. and it. it brings these really unexpected privacy benefits in this, in this intersection between on-chain and Lightning Bitcoin um, that are really cool. They just kind of come along for free for the ride, which is, which is great. Uh, so what all of those things bring together is, is this concept that will now become possible to build these uh, universal wallets. So um, if you have a self-custody app now on your phone, you usually will have you know, a Bitcoin balance and a Lightning balance that you imagine separately. With splicing, if it's, once it gets widespread on the network, people will be able to build apps that can do both of those in one place. And I think this is, this is like a, it's sometimes it's just a user experience problem. Like, imagine like having a, signing up a new, like your mom or your grandma to, to pick one, like here's a wallet app, and they're first confronted with, do you want on-chain or lightning? And they don't know what those terms mean. And then for us, Bitcoiners, it's like, oh, it's no problem. But if you're new, that's like adding those kinds of hurdles in the beginning, we're gonna lose people in the onboarding process. So. In order to fix that actual UI problem, there needs to be a network upgrade that is splicing to make that sort of thing possible. So get to that simple flow where just like, I have a Bitcoin balance in my, in my app and it works wherever I want to go. Okay, so I, uh, I decided that, that I was going to be very reckless and uh, put together an actual demo of splicing here today. So thank you. Please bear with me. Things might break left and right, uh, but hopefully it'll be exciting uh, nonetheless. And uh, please jump in with questions at any time. Are there any questions about what I've covered so far? No, I'm kind of fast there. Yes? So, so the difference between what you're doing and what Moon does, so Moon is on-chain and somehow it does lightning, there's some ring swaps. Yours, yours, yours would be negatively lightning and it splices to you on TFT. Exactly. So just, yeah, That's a great analogy. And I'm trying to repeat the question for the, for the uh, uh, pickup. He's asking, uh, is it like Moon or Moon, you, you keep the funds on-chain, and they move it on to Lightning with a submarine swap whenever you pay. It, it's, it's exactly like Moon, exactly opposite of Moon, where you store, yes, just like you said, on Lightning, and then you pull it out of Lightning on chain as needed. So by reversing the direction, the costs go down by, by many, many multiples. Uh, any more questions? Cool. Who feels like they know what the splicing is now? Okay, we got, we got more hands, more hands, but also more cautious hands. <laughs> All right, okay, so. Um, all right, so we're going to get a little in the weeds here. Please, if, if anyone feels confused any time, please, uh, please just jump in with a question. Okay, so we're going to go through um, the, a splice, and we're going to see it happen in front of us. This is the first time it's ever been demoed. Uh, in the world, so fingers crossed it actually works. <laughs> All right, so we have um, I have these commands that I saved here to make it a little easier for me. Going to fund a channel. So what I'm doing here is I'm running a local copy of Bitcoin. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's see if I can make this bigger. Okay, so we made a channel. Um, so in this graphic, we have a. 
me, that's, that's us over here. We have a channel going to this this node, just the, the, the name is random, 3C2. Uh, we get put in like put on Bitcoin, because we're we're you know we're balling, we're feeling kind of rich today. It's all fake Bitcoin, but but this is actually happening on a simulated Bitcoin node in the computer. We call it right test. I think that name is so confusing to people that don't know what it is. It sounds like some kind of regular expression test or something. But that is the name for running your own simulated Bitcoin environment. So you can like mint your own coins and you should have mine at whatever speed you want, right? So like Normally, we'd have to wait six block confirmations for this channel, but it, it just automatically mines six blocks in, in you know 20 seconds. So it ends up being useful for programming Bitcoin stuff, but also demoing more quickly than I have to. Imagine having to wait for each block to do anything. Okay, so we made our channel. Um, we're going to get our channel IDs. I'm going to store them in these variables here. So we're just storing the channel ID and the peer ID. Those will be useful for later. I can. They want to a little slower because he wants to read it. Cool. All right, now to the exciting stuff. So what we're gonna do is, this channel has 0.1 Bitcoin in it, and let's say we wanna splice in more funds to it. How about another 0.1 Bitcoin? You know, we just, we're feeling, feeling rich today. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna get some funds and put them in a PSBT. So we're gonna use this fancy command, which is putting in 0.1 Bitcoin plus a little mining fee. Let's see if this makes it a little bigger. A 450 sats. So we got this PSBT that we've made, it has um, 0.1 Bitcoin in it, and I probably should explain what a PSBT is. Uh, so, um, so like in Bitcoin, you can make Bitcoin transactions, right? I can like say I can send you know Bitcoin across the network to somebody, um, and typically we always do it is you run a wallet that will just put an address, hit send, and it goes. What it's doing internally without you noticing it is it's actually building a transaction, and then it's in a separate state, it's signing the transaction, and then it's publishing it. And those three things can be split up, right? So instead of just doing all in one go, we can say, okay, start the transaction, but don't do all the steps yet. I might want to change some things. This ends up being really important for things like splicing because we want to be able to start doing an action with a transaction, maybe add other things to it. Maybe we splice this one channel and also splice another channel, and maybe another channel. We'll let all be merged into a single Bitcoin transaction, which is how we get those um, efficiency fees. So the PSBT stands for partially signed Bitcoin transaction. That's like the, the vehicle, the car, the cargo ship that will actually carry our transaction around as it gets modified and everything gets, gets added to it. Okay, any questions? Okay, please jump in if you have any questions at all. All right, so we've made that. Now we're going to, um, we're gonna call this cool command. This is a command that I added to Core Lightning called splice init. There's a couple of these splice commands. This is what says we're going to start it. It's probably hard to see, isn't it? Let's see if I can. Did you write a new uh, plugin for that, or did you modify an existing plugin? I modified the, the internals of Core Lightning. It's like not in the plugin. It's... Oh, it's not in the plugin. No. no. I, like the, one of the things about, um, maybe if I just scoot this over, I feel like it's hard for you guys to see over here. It would be great if Splicing could be a plugin, um, but it turns out um, changing the definition of a channel balance um, touches almost everything inside of a Lightning implementation. Uh, so it, it just, it literally is a refactor of like a huge swath of the, um, the code base. So if it could be a plugin, that would be awesome, but I don't think it's, it's realistic. What does RES stand for in that? Oh, acronym? great question. So um, this is over here. So I'm just, I'm running a command, I'm playing um, splice init on the Lightning CLI, and I'm storing it in a variable that I call RES because typing result is too many letters, so I just did RES. But it could be anything, right? Uh, and then this is what's inside of it. This is the result that's correlating to this out. It's like, cool, it's success, the splice initiated. And then this long thing here is that PSPT we talked about earlier. So what this command did is it took in our, um, we added in those funds, we put in the 0.1 Bitcoin, gave it to correlating. It then took it, added in its own details of the transaction. So most importantly, what it added is it spent the existing uh, channel funding output so the old channel is actually spending it on chain and then creating a new one for it to go to at the end, and that's all going to be inside of this PSPT right now. Okay. So does that mean it resets all the, it resets the state so you don't need to keep all the history, the previous history of the back and forth? Stuff? With the HTLCs? Yeah. Um, uh, yes and no, that's a great question. Um, so like, you know, a naive way to implement splicing would be that you would, once you start splicing, you just throw them away and then you, um, pause the channel so nothing can happen until the splice is confirmed. 
But what that does is that would make everything a lot easier. It really would. Like the work of developing would go down dramatically. But the problem is, for those six blocks where you're waiting, the channel can't route payments. So because we want splicing to work live, you know, it's like we're doing we're doing maintenance on the plane while it's in the air. We want to do it like actually do it while it's flying, refuel it in the air. We want the channel to keep operating while the splice is waiting to be confirmed and happening. So what we do is we actually duplicate all of the HTLC states. So for, so we, we take the old one, every time we take all the HTLCs for the old for the existing channel, we duplicate them on this new splice channel, and we run them both in parallel for about six blocks until our, our, our new splice confirms. And then you drop all the old stuff and stuff in. Exactly, and once the new one confirms plus six blocks, we consider it confirmed enough, then we're able to switch over fully to the new splice channel and drop everything about the old channel. So this is a, a great point about um, database savings. A lot of the database costs for large nodes is storing all the old states of a channel. And splicing is gives us this great opportunity to put a checkpoint where we can just delete all that and free up tons of, of the database space. Yeah. So how do you um, like? What's the difference between the old channel states and the and the duplicate channel states? Um, I'm. Do, are you actually making the channel capacity larger? And if you're doing that, then uh, the channel state is keeping track of um, you know inbound and outbound channel capacity. So like, if you're taking a zero point one bitcoin uh, channel and you're turning it into a zero point two bitcoin channel, yeah. Um, then I guess what you're doing is you're trans you're translating all the old states so that they have uh, um, what like more money on your side. I guess if you're if the splice is oh I think I see what you're effectively going. adding money to your side. Like yeah, like how does this duplication occur? I guess is the question. Right. So uh, I'm trying to we should have mic to go around. I don't know if this one works. I realize it's a recording. People are not going to hear any of these questions. <laughs> that's a really complicated question. So <laughs> no, that's, that's not really. Yeah, a wire. Okay, so what, what I understand your question to be is, uh, let's say I have a 0.1 Bitcoin channel, and I'm splicing it to 0.2 Bitcoin, and someone makes a 0.15 payment while I'm waiting for the splice to confirm. What happens? Is that, is that close to what you're asking? That's a good test case for my question. Right yeah, I think of a <laughs> kind of test case that has some fun. So, um, What'll happen is if I if I make a one point five or a point one five Bitcoin um, payment, that would work on the post splice channel, but it wouldn't work on the pre splice channel. So in this in between time, we're waiting six blocks. That payment is going to get denied because it's too big for the old one. Hmm. Now this gets weird if you you can also take funds out of the channel with the splice. So if I have a point one Bitcoin, I want to take out half that. Now I got point oh five Bitcoin in the new splice one. Now it has to satisfy both. So a payment of, of say, you know, something bigger than that point, point oh six, um, it would be valid on the old channel, but not on the splice channel. So the new rules are like, all right, that's not valid on the new splice channel, it's, it's denied for the uh, for the entire channel. So you can only forward payments during that interim period if it would be valid, valid on both the old and the new. Exactly. Yep. And I'm assuming you can only start that validation checking after the first confirmation, right? So or or do you start actually doing this when the splice gets put in the new. We do it as, as soon as the, as the splice gets signed. Um, like I think, like once it, once we've given up a signature to our peer, we have to assume that it could be published, um, even if you know it wasn't published. So we we, we otherwise we leave open ourselves to being grifted and perhaps you know money stolen, right? So we're always in an adversarial mindset. Like assume everybody's trying to screw us all the time, and so like it, the moment we give up a signature, we got we got to start assuming that that can appear at any point. We gotta have all of our justice ready for both the old channel, the new one, all that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Sweet. Good question. Now, with yeah. zero point one BTC, are you assuming that's like just both local plus remote balance, or is it only your local balance? I'm just speaking the local term. Yeah. yeah. If, I mean, I'm sure you could, but you bother with what if you want to splice again before the six blocks? Do you have any? Is it like okay, or just like no, wait, wait for confirmation? That's a great question with a complicated <laughs> answer. <laughs> um, there, 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 there's two schools of doing this. Uh, one is you can the splicing protocol allows you to RBF the splices to bump the fees, right? And while RBFing, you, you could also change the balance at the same time, right? That's that that is definitely an option you can do. So that's a great point. That was a complicated answer we just said. I said it has to be valid for the old channel and then the new splice, it actually has to be valid for that plus every RBF candidate of the splice. 
which are all going to have a slightly different balance, if only if for no other reason than paying more fees, right? Um, so you can see how it kind of explodes internally. You got to get it all just right now. But uh, the other way, the uh, the uh, that, I, that I should mention, even though it's like it's like a I don't know, it's a it's it is what it is, is that zero cost splices. So if you want to take a splice that hasn't been confirmed, presume it was confirmed, and then do a splice on top of that. Um, and then you could do a splice on top of that. You can chain these zero comp splices together. And this is all for the goal of like users getting instant payments or something that feels like an instant payment, even though this is all zero comp, so it's not real, but you know, like uh, people want that like good user experience, right? And this is exactly an area where good user experience and like, you know, self custody are kind of bumping heads against each other, right? And like, I would love a world where just zero comp nothing, everything was actually confirmed, but uh, the, the market demand is there, yeah. In those kind of cases, I mean, there's no right way to do this, but do they, since, since you have an HTLC on the new one that can be added, and on the old one it doesn't fit, do they make it, you just say, here's every, you know, let me max out this old one, so even if the new one doesn't confirm, you get, like, some of the HTLC? Well, what these guys, I think what, what these guys are doing is they're, they're, they're saying if it's valid, or the new splice is just valid. Okay, so you're good. Old, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's adding a little bit of, um, trust elements, right? And then who's trusting who gets to be a complicated question that you really got to dive in deeply. But their goal is that the, as the LSP, they're not taking any risk, it's just their users taking a risk. And if they design that correctly, then in theory, you know, like, it's kind of like if you have a, your bank account says you got deposited deposit even if it's still being like processed or whatever, like that's kind of the idea of it. But there, you know, there might be a way where like the LSP can have all their money stolen, right? So like, you know, which I think is, is like really a problem already with some of those we see like, um, uh, Moon Wallet, M U U N, right? Like they, they're giving away funds on Lightning all the time, right? And they're they're just they're just risk analysis analyzing. Like, okay, we're giving away so little that hopefully no one like game theory just and screws us over, you know. But that's that's a risk that I don't think long term is viable. But I don't actually know the answer to your conf. Maybe it is safe. Maybe it isn't. Um, but it's happening, so we're gonna find out. <laughs> okay, cool. Any more questions? Okay, let's get back to splicing. All right, so we have our 0.1 Bitcoin channel. We're gonna splice in another 0.1 here. You know, fingers crossed, assuming the live demo actually actually works. We started the splice. Uh, now we're gonna come in and uh, um, use my text editor. So we're gonna run this command. So first you start the splice, and then you pass in the uh, PSPT that you wanna start with. It gives you back a PSPT with stuff in it. Now you have an opportunity to change that PSPT more. So I could add more transaction stuff to it, this is kind of the back and forth where at every moment you get a chance to change the transaction details of the splice. Here you might slip in um, you know, an on-chain payment you wanted to do, or an unrelated thing, or combine with a coin joint somehow, that kind of thing. Now that's our opportunity to do that, but we don't want to do any of that, so we're just gonna pass the PCT back through the splice update. And now we got commitment secured, which means that we're done with the updates. And now we can see on our beautiful display here, um, we're adding in 0.1 Bitcoin back to the channel. So if we then go and sign that transaction, since we added funds, we have to sign our PSPT with those funds, using the sign PSPT command there. And then the final command is we're gonna pass in to our splice signs command here, we're gonna pass that PSPT back in. And assuming everything goes right, boom, okay. Now our um, splice channel is waiting for confirmation. So this is in the state we were talking about where it's, it's actually a 0.1 Bitcoin channel with 0.1 being added in as the splice. And so for six confirmations, it's going to be in this in, this in between state. Um, so is there, a, is there a remote balance? I guess this question was already asked, but is there a remote balance in the channel or is this all in one direction? Uh, there, there could be a remote balance, but well, we're only working there. Is there I guess. How is the remote balance on the demo? Like, is there a remote balance on your demo? On your right testing? Oh, no, that would show up right here. Um, I can, share, I, can, I can show it looks like in a second, sorry. No I'm really excited with this tool that I made. <laughs> it does show that, it does show that. But this channel only has one-line balance. I'm just keeping it simple for so the... Is this a live view of your reg test? Yes. Oh. Yeah, this is, this is actually a live view. These I are thought this was a slide that you made like before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got like, it, and I also, like, you see all the on-chain details of what it did. Here's all the commands, you know, the... Oh, neat, the okay, yeah, this is... <laughs> so this is live, yeah, this is cool. like... Which means if it breaks, you know, just, just be aware that it's live, it's the first time it's ever being used. Um, probably it will break in some way, I just don't know which way. 
Okay, so um, now if we mine some blocks, so this is gonna need six confirmations, right? Some blocks, this should everything works right, fingers crossed, update to, there, boom, there it is, point two Bitcoin. Swipe the channel. Um, so, uh, we can see here uh, a list of, these are the actual things that happened, the on-chain events. Um, so this was like the initial, this is before we even started making channels. This was the making of the channel, and this is the splice of the channel. So you can see we have uh, two, two transactions on chain. And what we're gonna do, if we have time, is go through um, this same process with existing methods and see how many transactions we end up with. Will it be two? You know, will it be more than two? Will it be less than two? What interesting results are, await us. Okay, so what I wanted to get through, you were saying, like, what does it look like if there's a balance on this side? Um, just because it's fun, I want to show off that like, I did this. I will do a quick key send here. Hopefully that works. There we go. So there, there there's, I just, I just sent 3 million sats over the channel. It's really quick, I wish it were slower so you could see that it's really updating. Um, but yeah, that, that's what my little graphic looks like. So this is showing a channel where, now we have 0.17 Bitcoin, and he's got you know, 0 0.03 over on this side. The equivalent of 3 million sats. Awesome. Cool, any questions? Yes? Because this is all using PSVTs, is there any way for different splices to sort of interact? Like where you could splice out of one channel and have, and splice the same amount into another channel and have that like depend? I love your question, that is a great freaking question. Yes? <laughs> what was the question, Justin? Oh, right, what's the question? We don't have a mobile like this. He's asking, is it, was there any way to splice funds out of the channel and then into another channel at the same time. And uh, I mean, we could have met these words. I call it cross-sizing, you know, but like this is frontier stuff. We could, whatever words that we think are coolest, we should use. <laughs> it's got a Z in it, that's fun. Maybe it's the two Zs, I don't know. But that's the animation is showing, it's exactly that. And so you take the PSP, you start one splice, get the PSPT, and that's part of the reason every step you're able to get the PSPT and modify it is on that step, you can go to a second splice you're trying to do and merge that piece into that one, and then merge those changes back, kind of back and forth in this iterative process. So you eventually get a collaborative single transaction that does exactly that. And um, what's wild is like you could do this with more than two. So you could have like three, four n channels and like try to reset them all in one single transaction. So you'd be moving a lot of pieces of teaser out, but the end result will be the most efficient on chain uh, block space usage possible. Great question. Yes? Can you just explain what the two transactions on chain that occurred, like what each of those were? Yes. I okay, let's just go, I'll go, we'll go through these. So, I, my, my tool writes it up. This is a kind of small read, aren't they? Let's make them bigger. Okay, here we go. So um, in order to, when I started up the node, I, I, I mined a one fake Bitcoin. So that, that's, that's unrelated to the other activity, but it, it shows up. This is the creation of the uh, channel. So we spent 154 sats, that was our mining fee to open the channel. And we made a new 0.1 Bitcoin channel with this, uh, with this uh, short channel in D6.1. D6 and then the second transaction says, okay, we're gonna splice 0.1 Bitcoin into D21, and in that process we actually end up changing the uh, short ID, because the short ID is actually um, about where it is on the blockchain. So as we're moving the blockchain, that, that ID is gonna change, so it's trying to get it relabeled. And then this is the mining fee that we spent on that. Does that seem clear? Cool. Right, and so what we're gonna do next is go through like some examples of what you would do this in a traditional way, and you can kind of see, we have two transactions here, they're relatively simple, but they're gonna be a lot more complex going back to like the, uh, the old ways. If we can get through them without this thing breaking, which is a big if. Okay, so, um, got a little script here. We did splice in. Okay, now we're going to, um, oh, you know what I also wanna do is just to be fair in the test, we're gonna close the channel, which will be an extra um, on-chain step. This is all the potential on-chain uh, things. Do you know how much time we have? Is it, it's an hour long, right? Thank you. Sweet. Did you have a question? I thought that was your hand. Okay, so we're just gonna close the channel. 
you have your little lightning detector tool like in a GitHub repo? Is it a plugin? Like, <laughs> um, I, it will be, yes. I literally wrote it this week, you know, I was like, I don't know, I just wanted to make this demo a little more exciting than just slides, so I was like, I'm gonna do this. It was really ambitious to spend a week uh, building this thing, but but I just live it on the edge, you know. Um, yeah, it's nice. So I think I need to generate a lot more addresses for clothes to we come through. We want to more than we want slides. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're closing the channel now. Cool. Um, let's take a little confirm. But you can see the point is you can see there's there's three transactions here. There's a new one on top here uh, that closes out the channel, and it doesn't spend three million sats. That is a, a bug in the interface. It just closes the channel. So we have three total transactions: opening, splicing, and closing. Right? Keep them up. Three. We've got three. Just pencil notes. Hopefully that's confirmed now. Yeah, great. Now it's gone. No channels. We finished the entire process. Now what we're going to go through, we're going to we're going to live do this with the um, the old way. So let's, I'm just going to delete everything, destroy all of my lightning inner, universe. I'm going to make a new one. I'll wait for it to appear in the interface. Boom. There we go. Boom. We got a new channel. And it's confirmed. Just like that. Back to the size. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to, let's say we wanted to add some more capacity to this to this channel. We can't add to the channel. What we would do instead is make a second channel to go alongside next to it. So what we do is we end up having to do um, essentially fund a second channel. Which will show up because there's no bugs in the interface. <laughs> there it is. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so now we have two channels, right? And this is effectively it's, it's close enough to call it the same as having a 0.2 Bitcoin channel um, as far as usability goes. As long as you have multi-path payments, as a side note. But um, the big difference is the on-chain footprint, right? So so far we only have um, well the middle doesn't count. We have two we have two transactions, right? But where the costs start coming in is. When we later need to close these, I'm going to close these, close. Um, did you get the channel IDs? Pay out 0.15 Bitcoin and then close it out. Oh, you want me to, okay, you want me to make it exciting? All right, I'm in. Okay, so we want to see if, um, if we can pay a 1.15 Bitcoin. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Yeah. Let's see. Let's make it extra exciting. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's this right? <laughs> That's not real money. Uh, we still copy the keys. All right. So um, we're going to we're going to send point one point five. Is it right? 0 0.15, which is going to be 15 million sats. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. These are millisats, so 1, 2, 3. I think, I think. I don't think this is going to work, but let's just see what happens. No path found. Yeah. Um, right, so what you have to do is to pull out 0.1 from one of them and 0.05 from the other one. Or that would do it, yeah. Five, right? If we spliced it over. There's a thing I, I kind of glossed no, over. But that's what, if you can't splice it, then you have to pull multiple transactions in order to pull from both of them. Right. We, we could, in theory, do do half of that. So it's like. Which is why you want to splice it. <laughs> yes. Let's go. I did, I did half of it. Boom. And then I'll do, I did half of it again. And my math is off. But anyway. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, now we're going to close it. So let's go to, uh, let's close these channels. Okay, that one's closing, and then channel two is not closing. So, oh, I just, I didn't pump these out. There we go. Okay, we're closing channels over here. Close the channels with the right. Very exciting. 
death through lighting channels. Okay, so um, now we're looking at the on-chain footprint. Um, what we've done is we've uh, had this, there's so many. Okay, so we have, we just have more transactions here. We have, we have one here, one here, one here, one here. So you have pending, but essentially four total for, for this kind of thing. And so, you know, it, it's, it's like one more transaction in splicing, but I think the, these small amounts matter and add up. And there's also a thing here that's, that's um, not really visible is that these potentially could have justice transactions on them, which are very, very expensive. If you ever have a justice thing on mining, the, the fees are always way overpaid kind of thing. And having two liable points with, that might need to be justice on, you're, you're doubling your justice cost for doing that, which is a concern in splicing eliminates that too. So those are the, kind of the two points. So it's like we're getting some ch channel savings. We, we, saved a tra we saved one transaction. Um, but I think that the, we get some minor ones there, but the, the channel savings get a little more interesting if you start wanting to do some cross-channel sizing stuff. So what I want to show next is, let's say we have two channels. Let's say what we're doing first before we get down there. We're going to have, we're going to have two channels, all of our funds in the two channels. We're going to close one of those channels and move those funds into the other one by using this duplicated channel process so that we can move the liquidity from one channel to another. And then look at how many transactions there is to, to do that process. Spoiler alert, it's going to be a lot. Whereas in, in Splice, this would be, this would be one transaction. Okay, so I think a bad guy keep the tension up, I should say. Who knows what's going to happen? I have no idea. All right, so let's just uh, reset everything. We're going to make two, two, um, two channels this time. Channel number one is there. And let's add channel number two. It's coming. There's an edge of their seat. Well, the channel right there's a channel. Okay. Uh, just to clarify a few things. Uh, these are just the identifiers at the end of the public keys for each node. They're just, you know, ran a random couple set of letters, but we're just naming them. So this is an important distinction here. This channel is the node, it's called 661. So this is 600, these are random numbers, but the point is that they're, they're different places, right? And our goal is we're trying to get 0.2 to this 661 node. We currently want to get it out of this 600 into 61. How do we do it? We have to, without splicing, this is the old way before splicing, we're going to have to close this channel. Um, so let's go ahead and close that channel. Over. Please jump with any questions at any time. If anything is confusing or you're just excited about something. Okay. Close channel two. No, not channel that. Channel two, please. And I need a dollar sign. So typing these is just harder when you're on stage. I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay. And this should update. Yeah, now this is updating because it's closing. It's in a pending state. And we got to generate like tons of blocks because the. Uh, the number of blocks you need to close it is much larger. I forget the exact actual number, but it's, it's much more than six, which is an important point here. We're gonna have to wait a while for this channel to close because channel closes take longer um, than, yes, 10 minutes, thank you. Okay, we're gonna speed things up. Um, so channel closes take longer than channel opens do or splices. So we have to wait more number of blocks, but on top of that, there's a risk you might have to wait for our longest, what's called HTLC delay that's pending. So in theory, closing this channel could take um, Freaking like I don't know days to close, and then that's so th these funds end up stuck in this in this kind of zombie state. If they, they have the potential of being stuck in that zombie state, which is one thing we get around here from my more blocks going through hundred blocks here. Point is this this part of it is taking a long time. Whereas the splicing we were able to go uh, right away. Um, do, 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 do. Still waiting. I think I'm really drilling the point home by how long it's taking. Yes. Splicing interacts with CoinJoin. I know you said it. Yes. Somehow it does something with it, but what does it do? So the 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 splicing has been designed such that you can modify the transaction at any point during the splicing process. The modify, you're really free to put whatever you want in there. So you could add uh, any other transaction that you're trying to do. You could throw in there, um, and you could, for instance, a uh, a CoinJoin service could also run a Lightning node and take their customers' transactions and merge them with these splice transactions. So they would just be like in the well pool mix that you're doing. Exactly. Oh, wow. 
And it's, it's, not, it's not precisely a coin join, it's coin join like, um, but it's got some cool benefits. There's no central coordinator, so it's, it's the, the coordination is all across the Lightning Network. And anyone can add transactions to it, and it's, you know, I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna speed things up because I said we got time. We closed that channel, right? And now we have that 0.1 Bitcoin. Let's, um, let's open up a new channel to, to 661. This command should do. Demo still working, cross your fingers. Boom, okay. So now, we have, before we had a channel to 661 and then one to 600. Now we have two to 661 with point, um, total of 0.2 Bitcoin, right? So this is the net end results of what splicing did, although it was a little more awkward, right? And then let's just go ahead and close these channels, make the test, make the test fair. I'm gonna get the channel IDs again. Uh, it is. Let's see. Yeah, so what we're demoing here, it's a great point, is that... The balance is on your side. Don't you have to transfer it to Oh, I, I mean uh, the balance on my side, 261. So in splicing, in this case, we're both doing our own funds. Okay. Not The balance on the other side is it's their funds. They can do what they want with it. We have no control over it other than asking them to do things or whatever. This is a slightly different result, right, because you have two channels. Yes. Okay. But it's the closest equivalent without splicing is, is to do this, right? Yeah, the other way would just be to close both channels and open a bigger channel. You could do that too, that would take even more transaction space and your channel will be down for, for that entire time. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to close these two channels, close channel one, channel two. And we're going to generate a million blocks, let that go, generate 100 blocks, which is a long time. But now we're going to look at, so we just did the equivalent of, of a cross splice, which we demonstrated before is just, um, you know, three transactions, open, splice, close. And this one is going to have, um, I don't know if it'll fit all on the page. Let's see here. All right. So in this example, you're, you're really starting to see some of the benefits of splicing, right? We, we, we open the channel, both of these need to open it. And then we, um, we had to uh, close out the channel. And then we had to open the new channel and then close out the, the old one there. So it's, an, it's almost doubling the amount of, of block space used to do the equivalent thing without splicing. And again, we still have that same problem I mentioned before. Of, um, these, the justice costs, the potential justice costs, are, are, which are very expensive, are also doubled by having twice the number of things to do justice on. So point is, this is long, thank you for following me through all of this. Uh, the point is that splicing is very efficient and it's great and it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Thank you. When uh, splicing? When splicing? So, um, uh, where's where's Lisa? Uh, she went out. No, Lisa's great. The, the the splicing is currently on Lisa's desk. <laughs> um, let's see. And I had a little going away slide. Here we go. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm Dusty Damon. You can follow me on Twitter. Like, you can follow you on GitHub if you want to see like large, uh, complicated technical discussion. If you want to hear jokes with the Federal Reserve, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> uh, and I want to pump my website that I just made again, lightningsplice.com. I'm, I'm keeping up to date with all the latest things happening with splicing and trying to keep it posted there with both a combination of uh, simplified explanations of things and technical ones and videos and everything you might, if you have a question about splicing or if you want to like someone else's a question, you can, hopefully it's a resource that helps people just be more aware of what's going on with splicing. Uh, funded by grants and donations by awesome people. Um, most importantly, Cody, if you could do me a favor, I'm trying to like bug the hell out of him. Like if you know Cody, just be like, hey, Dusty thanks you on stage today. He's just going to show amazing. So I, I, I'm, I'm trying to wear him out with compliments is my goal. And he only get the latest grant. Yes? As a heads up, your Twitter has a typo. It's should be A E. Oh, shouldn't it? No, no, I'm saying like. Oh! Your screen is wrong. Your screen is. As in, your handle is correctly spelled, just not on. Well, whoops. Yeah, so that's correct. That is your handle. Whoops. Cancel my own things. Okay. Oh, they're caps, and everyone knows. Okay. Hey, Dusty, one other question. Do you, because yes. um, I know the blockstream guys, well, Warren is also talking about peer swap. Yes. Do you see like an interaction there? Like, can a peer swap also do a splice? Like, 
Yes, I think that um, there there's both overlap and ways to work together with pure swap and splicing. I think like splicing is like kind of in my eyes the better solution to some chunk of what pure swap does. But importantly, splicing is only ever on. Um, let me get this graphic up again. I think I have it here. Oh, channel to close. Importantly, splicing is only ever on uh, managing your own liquidity. Yeah. So like. The, the funds on my side, splicing is like the magic tool for everything there, but it, it doesn't help you with the other side of the liquidity equation. And that's where things like peer swap and some green swaps and uh, liquidity ads, like those all come in useful, right? And I, I think like, I, I'm a fan of like uh, liquidity ads plus splicing solves like most of the challenges I think you have, but there's moments where peer swap makes all kinds of sense in the, um, the other side of the liquidity side just as the liquidity. And I think in general there's like, a lot of these ideas coming to lightning. And I think that it's it's never, it's not gonna be one of those things where it's like one's actually better than the other. You really just form this huge tool set. And like, there's just trade-offs with every single one. And I think we're all kind of in this happy family, right? Where it's like, I, I imagine eventually we'll have, you know, software automation that does all these things and it looks at like, okay, first I'm gonna try a circular rebalance. And when that doesn't work, which it never does. <laughs> um, then I'm going to try doing X and Y and Z that are cheaper, and then eventually splicing on that list, and it's like going to be much cheaper than doing like a um, like a swap with a magma or a pool or whatever. It's going to be a lot cheaper than that, and then eventually I fall into other things, right? Depending on the liquidity needs. There's also this thing with like um, so you um, you can kind of run into this problem where the um, with if you just splice forever. If all your funds are going out one channel and coming in everywhere else, and you're constantly um, splicing your funds in the other channels into that one, the other channels will eventually just get too small, right? And then, so like, splicing isn't this magic bullet that is like you just use it forever and it's really problem to solve. It, it is a magic bullet for the right moments. And, and it, it, it helps you just more effectively use your capital. And this is a long way to answer, but yeah, peer swap and, and, and uh, splicing I see definitely working together. And I think like, we're kind of learning all of the ways to manage liquidity, and I think, Eventually, we're going to start figuring it out, and the profit incentive is there. You know? Yeah. One other question. Um, I don't know if this is on the hub the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, with the, I guess the way you designed it, instead of naive splicing, as we said, your channel does not go offline. So the, you know, because it's not just the channel goes down to you, you make your partner couldn't grab. Yes. Through, you know, so I guess the idea, the reason. The reason you designed it this way is so that your channel partner can still wrap normally without caring, right? One hundred percent. Because you've got they would just kind of retain HTLCs on both in both versions of history, let's say. Yep. And be able to route on both sides, and then once it confirms, okay, now we've got our license to correct the channel. Yep, one hundred percent. And I think like oftentimes when you want to change liquidity on channels, it's because it's a valuable channel. It's like this channel is getting a lot of activity. I right? like I want to promote this channel, give it more stuff. And the last thing I'm going to do is shut down your good channels to do anything, right? And some of the, um, as I understand, some of the, the, the long-lived channels, right? Like some of the heuristics or whatever. That oh, yeah. They like to see that it's a long-lived channel. So right. Closed it. Yeah, although I guess splicing does change the channel point, so maybe it does change the, well, we need, we the need age the, of the channel, let's say. We need all those, all those algorithms that determine age to account for splicing and not consider it an age change. Yeah, otherwise you're yeah, losing your <laughs> three-year-long channel or whatever. And I think objectively it's not an age change, but they will update you know, their algorithms to, to reflect that. Yeah. Yes? Kelsey, I noticed you mostly did splice in, or splice outs, are those hard? Or no, they're, they're, they're pretty easy. They just don't look as cool when you demo them. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, like splice out is basically, you have 0.1 uh, Bitcoin channel, you lower it to 0.5, and you make a 0.5 on-chain payment. Um, I think I want to add like some kind of cool animation for that, so that it looks cooler, I'll probably put that in future presentations. But as it looks now, this channel balance goes down, and it's like, what happened? I don't know. So, uh, I want to add more visualizations to this and do that kind of thing. And I also want to add like a little like a meter bar of how much block space you use. You know, that like, turns red or something as you go up, something like that. Um, Are there any other implementations? You know, async, LND, cross lightning. Any of them looking at it, Yeah, async has been working on it. Um, I think like since for a little while now. They're they're almost done, as I understand it. I haven't followed it too closely. But you can tell because like the, the questions that have come through from ASIC have been like, oh that's a question and you're like, you know, at least 70% done. Oh, this question, okay, I can kind of tell for there, and they're they're coming along great. And I think like as a lightning developer, it's very exciting to have I can hurry up, but let's have a second one going because um, uh, we need two for confirmation as official spec thing. And I gotta speed up a quick question. Yeah. 
like if the splicing happened that affect the bolts, it will be included in the bolts, it will be like a bleed? Be to like be in the bolts, it has to be in two implementations. So that's oh, why okay. it, it motivates us all to work together, which is good, you know? And when the one is done in for lining, uh, let's see, async, it will be, um, it will be their own bolt? Or... Yeah, it will be one bolt that is for splicing. Okay. Yeah, and I, 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 I'm, being, I'm feeling the hurry energy. Thank anyway, you. thank you so much for coming.